Imagine this. Fill it. Thank you, sir. Here is your 2,000 rupees. Why would anyone be paid to buy petrol? For the first time in history, the price of oil has turned negative. On the 20th of April 2020, the WTI or West Texas Intermediate Crude, a benchmark for US crude oil prices, dropped to as low as negative $37 and ultimately settled at minus $13 per barrel. The coronavirus pandemic has strangled the world's economies, silenced factories and grounded airlines, cutting the need for fuel. So an oil trader, who three months ago may have promised to perform an obligation on a future date, hence called futures market, I will buy oil at X dollars on May 21st, 2020, was legally bound to take possession of his 1,000 barrels on that date. Because it takes time to transport the oil from the seller's refinery to the buyer's warehouse, the date of making payment for the delivery expired exactly a month before, on April 21st, 2020. But now there's hardly any demand for oil anywhere in the world. So the trader doesn't want to take delivery because even his earlier stock lies unsold. He therefore needs to temporarily store it elsewhere. How much to store oil at your warehouse? What? You're all full? Not only are most storage tanks all full, even oil tankers costing as much as $30,000 per day are filled to the brim floating around on the high seas waiting for buyers. With the penalty for defaulting on the contract too high, the trader's last option is to find another buyer for his oil. Hey Phil, can you buy my contract? Joe, Stanley, Anthony. Okay, Oof. you mean you're ready to take my oil, but I have to pay you to buy it? That's correct. It was this desperation for getting rid of contracts at any cost that led to negative oil prices for a while. Now let's see the backstory of how this crisis developed. It all started when a marriage of convenience ended in a bitter separation. When the 14 oil producing and exporting countries that comprise OPEC and Russia, who together control about 55% of the world's crude oil supply, began their lives in three years ago, the price of the international benchmark Brent crude oil was hovering between $60 to $70 per barrel, but threatening to fall. Because the United States, once the world's largest importer, after figuring out a way to extract oil and gas from rocks or shale in a process known as fracking, last year, 2019, became a net exporter by 3 million barrels per day. This additional supply from the US, coupled with low growth in China and the rest of the world, put a squeeze on prices. So to keep oil at a viable range of around $60 a barrel, OPEC and Russia decided to take a hit and cut their production to prevent a glut. But the coronavirus scare added an unexpected dimension to the mix. March 5, 2020, OPEC headquarters, Vienna. Saudi oil minister Prince Abdulaziz bin Salman suggested, We need further cuts to control prices. OPEC was ready to reduce output by 1 million barrels per day and proposed that Russia cut theirs by half a million. Considering that OPEC's market share is four times that of Russia, the ratio of production cuts seemed unfair taking off the Russian energy minister, Alexander Novak. We can't keep on cutting production. It hurts our profit and helps America instead. I need to talk to Mr. Putin. And walked out of the meeting. Without waiting for Novak's reply, OPEC unilaterally went ahead and cut production by a million barrels, effectively ending their three-year marriage of convenience. When Novak's reply did come, it was a declaration of war. Neither we nor any country should be forced to cut output. To teach their former partner a lesson, Saudi Arabia abandoned its promised cuts and instead increased production by 3 million barrels per day. Saudi then needled them even further, offering the additional output at discounts to the Europeans, Russia's main buyers. Now it was an all-out war. Seeing them fight, all oil producers began producing more and flooded the world with oil. So crude prices, which at one time were $149 per barrel, now dropped from $45 first to a low of $23, going on to hit $16 in the current crisis, its lowest in 36 years. For oil importing countries like Japan, China, South Korea and India, this fall in prices should have been good news. India is already filling up its strategic petroleum reserves in the underground rock caverns of Mangalore, Padur, Karnataka and Vishakhapatnam. And while that may give the country a little windfall, falling oil prices are a devil in disguise. 
because if the demand for oil is falling, it means that the world economy is slowing down. Take India, who imports 90% of its oil requirements of 4.5 million barrels per day, benefits by 10,700 crore or $1.5 billion for every dollar per barrel drop in crude prices. Meaning, if prices stayed down for the whole year and the rupee dollar exchange rate remained the same, they could save as much as $50 billion. Though in reality, prices will fluctuate and the dollar has already strengthened so they will end up probably saving half as much. But whatever nation saved by a drop in oil prices, it loses at least twice as much from lost exports. In March 2020 alone, Indian exports fell by $11.2 billion, 35%, when 29 of 30 product categories, all except iron ore, registered a contraction. The blame for the current crisis can be attributed to the ego of Mohammed bin Salman MBS, whose position as heir to his 82-year-old father King Salman of Saudi Arabia is also under threat. Already he is under pressure for having purged and arrested parts of his extended family for months at the Ritz-Carlton, for his suspected hand in the death of Washington Post journalist Jamal Khashoggi, and for his unpopular and expensive war against the Houthis in Yemen, who attacked two of Saudi Aramco's oil facilities through weaponized drones, the world's largest oil processing facility, the Abqaiq oil refinery, and 230 kilometers away, Aramco's second largest oil field at Khuraiz. The damage impacted close to half of the kingdom's output, and though it was repaired within a week, the vulnerability of the kingdom's most important oil asset was exposed. Aramco's ambitious IPO too failed to get the sought after listing on international stock exchanges, ending up at the much smaller Riyadh's Tadawul Stock Exchange, where it opened at just 10% above the issue price of 32 Riyals at a decent $1.88 trillion valuation but well below the hope for $2 trillion. MBS desperately needed oil prices to remain at around $60 per barrel, enabling him to pay for his welfare schemes that go into keeping his citizens happy and in control. Because at below $30, Saudi could go bust. Russian leader Vladimir Putin, also fearing trouble at home, recently consolidated his position by making himself Prime Minister for life till 2036. Across the Atlantic, all this turmoil is making another major oil-producing country's president nervous. US President Donald Trump, worried about a plunging economy and job losses in his re-election year, tried to broker peace, speaking to both MBS, Putin and non-OPEC leaders over the course of a week. This price war is hurting all of us. You need to patch up and cut production. Even cajoling the Mexican president. We will cut production by only 100,000 barrels, not 400,000. We will make up for your lost revenues in some other ways, I promise. He thought he'd made a good deal when finally everyone agreed to slash production from 100 MBPD to around 90. But it was not to be. While production was cut by 15 million barrels per day, demand fell by 30, which led to panic and the current negative prices. Bizbo's Limerick There was once a precious commodity called oil that was considered black gold under soil. But now it's a curse, burning a hole through your purse, throwing the world upside down in turmoil. Subscribe to Bizbo's channel and be sure to click on the bell icon. Be the first to know when Bizbo releases a new video.